We are live. Awesome. Hello, everybody. Howard County Democrats, State of Maryland Democrats, and everyone else. I am Cynthia Fikes, president of the Columbia Democratic Club. And today we wanted to come and have a conversation with our local experts on the question of the Howard County and Central Democratic Central Committee, as well as the State Party and Central Committee. So the big question of the evening is, what is it and why did you care? So some really interesting commentary coming up. I wanted to take a minute to introduce everyone. I'm going to start at the top of the page with Justin Butler of the Maryland State Party. Justin, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Good evening, everybody. I'm Justin Butler. I'm the political and organizing director with the Maryland Democratic Party. Happy to be with you all. Thank you so much. Next, I have Patricia Thomas. If you'd introduce yourself quickly. Yes, I'm Patricia Thomas. I'm the current president of Thurgood Marshall Democratic Club of Howard County and also a former member of the Howard County Democratic State Central Committee. Excellent. Thank you. Tony McGutton. Hi, Tony McGutton. I'm a past president of ECDC, a founding member of the Western Howard County Democratic Club and a former uh, Howard County Democratic Central Committee chair. And nice to be here with you all. Thank you, glad to have you. And Sue Geckel. Hi, my name is Sue Geckel. I am the temporary current president of Ellicott City and Western Howard Democratic Club and a former member of the Howard County Democratic Central Committee. Glad to be here. Glad you're here. So everybody, let's get into it. We've got an hour to cover a little bit of ground. Let's talk about the history of the Democratic Central Committee. Um, Justin, did you wanna give us a brief overview? Be happy to. So uh, as a brief overview, our Democratic Central Committees, uh, they've existed for just about as long as our party has here in the state of Maryland. The Democratic Central Committees are the on the ground organizations and elected officials that make up the Maryland Democratic Party. At our core, we are nothing but a collection of county and Baltimore City's central committees who come together once every, uh, once every six months to conduct party business, make decisions about the direction of the party, and also lend guiding advice to the leaders of the party who are running day-to-day -day operations. Thank you. And um, in reference to the history, let's talk a little bit about the structure and, and how it works. You've said it's all of the central committees together plus Baltimore City, is that correct? Okay, all right. And so with this structure, you the purpose, like what is actually the purpose of the structure committee? Is it a policy making body? Is it um, an activist body? Like what is the reason that we have a central committee? What is their role? Great question. Uh, mm -hmm. The purpose of our Maryland Democratic Party central committees are to support our- This meeting is our, being recorded. The purpose okay. of our Democratic central committees are to support our democratic elected officials and democratic party policy. Mm -hmm. uh, the Democratic Central Committees are the on the ground fighters that are fighting to make sure that we get Democrats elected up and down the ballot to make sure that we are protecting election rights in all corners of the state and to make sure that local individuals and local activists have a say in how our party is run. Excellent, excellent. Now there's a wealth of experience on this call. Tony, when you were on there, what was your understanding of the purpose of the Central Committee and how did that work for you? You're muted. The rule of thumb basic understanding was to grow the party to facilitate election of Democrats and, uh, and to engage a community uh, in, in becoming involved. And the work of it, though, is very, I mean, it's a, it's a collection of, you know, for this, the Central Committee members, uh, very physical, very demanding physical job, technical, organizational challenge. Uh, we have the big events uh, each year. The, the, uh, we used to be the JJ party, and then last, recently, the Defending Democracy Dinner, which was done on Zoom and was fantastic. It was so well done. But the... Um, my understanding was uh, the coordinating of it's all of these questions are sort of interrelated. It's as if as if we're constantly multitasking on the the central committee. 
because when you have these events, you're, you're not only uh, having the public in uh, to become more involved in the democratic politics, but often they're coming into contact with their representatives and their representatives are then meeting constituents close on. And as some of the very big events uh, those local representatives are the keynote speakers. They're the ones that are, that are really driving the, the ideology and they get a chance to do that with, uh, with the, the public. And that's one of the very important roles of the Central Committee, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Pat, did you want to take a stab at that? Unmute. I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes, you know, my understanding uh, of what the party was from was before I even joined, because I wanted to know what the function was. I'd always worked in many uh, different political campaigns within the county and different candidates. And so after that, I decided, because I had the time, I wanted to learn more about my party. As a Democrat, you've got to know how your party works and what you can do to help to make it work better. And that's what I wanted to do. So when I first came to um, the, the party office and talked to wonderful people who were there at the time, Carol Chase and um, uh, Michael McPherson and um, Kathy Zumluffer, they were the ones who were there in the office on a daily basis. And people were just coming in all the time. So I came in and I asked questions <laughs> about what I could do, how, how I could volunteer. And that, that's how I started. I started as a volunteer in that office. I was answering phones. I was answering um, correspondence that was sent into the office by the residents of Howard County. And also giving information to some of the next officials, uh, being there to help to give out um, their information around uh, time for election. So once I found out what the responsibilities would be and how I could fit, my skill set in there, then um, I said, well, maybe this is something I, sh I should try to, to run for. I'd never run for public office. That was new to me. So I, I had to learn how to do that. I took a class. I took the National Democratic Training class. It was outstanding. See, I'm a learner, and I have to learn how things work, and I want to know how they're supposed to work. And then if I could put my little two cents in there to make it better, then that's what I wanted to do. So I did all of those things to prepare myself. Well, you know, nothing prepares you for a campaign. <laughs> no, and <laughs> nothing prepares you for a campaign, but to be in it. And so that's why I did it. And that's how I really got started um, coming to the office as a volunteer to see what I could do to work um, for the Democrats, for the party of which, you know, I, I signed up to be a member of because their principles and values were mine. And I wanted to work more. Okay, now it's interesting you say that because you kind of segued into the next question. And, I'm, and Sue, if you can unmute very quickly, when we talk about the purpose of the Central Committee, Miss um, Tom, Miss Pat, what am I calling you on this? Miss Pat, Miss <laughs> Pat kind of went into what a Central Committee member actually does. I mean, it's kind of a two-part question, but do you want to take a stab at that and tell us about your experience? Um, the Central Committee is the boots on the ground. Um, we, and Pat and I served um, four years together. Um, when uh, the governor's race was, we had weekly phone banks. And what we did is a group of Central Committee members would get together and sponsor it. We'd get food and we'd, it, we'd go to the, the office and we'd have like 20, 30 people making phone calls. Um, we did that weekly. So like, you know, from primary day and we didn't do anything on the, before primary, but from primary day to the, the election, we were in the office. Um, and then we were, were working for candidates, knocking on doors. Um, and as Tony mentioned, some of the events, uh, we were organizing and Pat was the, the, the queen of the, the, um, the picnic, this Labor Day picnic, she, I think she did that all four years that we were together. Um, we had the, the Jefferson Jackson dinner and that became the unity dinner. Um, so I worked on that um, with, you know, another group of um, the central committee. Mm -hmm. um, we had volunteer coordinators. Um, we, we, you know, so everybody sort of had a role and try to work in things that interest them. 
but definitely phone banking, knocking on doors. Um, they, they were the high priority during the election season. Mm -hmm. And then um, non-election season, we, we did events and we tried to, you know, work on getting more people into the party. Um, we didn't all, we weren't always um, successful in everything we wanted to do, but uh, we spent a lot of time trying. Excellent, excellent. And so what I'm hearing, first of all, is each of you came in with a different level of skill set or experience and you're committed, like, was it a commitment to the party goals or you were just, you know, I just want to get involved. I mean, how important is it to be aligned with the goals of the Dem Maryland Democratic Party? Well, you, you know, if you, if you don't mind, um, I think you really have to understand what the goals of the party are so that you will know how you're going to serve best. And you sort of have to adhere to uh, what's needed and you have to sort of organize your life around that. And I would tell anybody who's thinking of doing this, you're gonna have to give up some of your private time because you've made a commitment that you're going to do this to help the party. And you know, knocking on doors, phone banking, all of those things that we did, you know, planning for dinners, having those fundraisers that would help us to help uh, other people who were campaigning and to do the kinds of things we knew as a central committee we needed to do to get the message out and there were many things we had to do so we had to have time to plan so you sort of had to put your your life on hold just a little until we could get all of that planned out and then everybody would have their particular part or piece and we would work it and that's how it worked you had to come together to work to get the work done you had to that's interesting, but Justin, if I can pivot very quickly, as we're talking about the work and the events and the phone backing and all, what is the message? What is it that the Central Committee is actually attempting to do with all of these, great with all of this activity? No, great question. Uh, so our state Democratic Party is founded for a lot of, we do a lot of things at the state level and our local committees are the backbone of all of that action. So if we are putting out messaging, for instance, we hope that our local Democratic Central Committees will help spread that message to the people they know. There's a reason that individuals generally get elected to a Democratic Central Committee. They are already activists. They are already involved. They already know people. And we generally, as a Democratic Party, hope that you will spread that message with your networks. But as a core principle and as a core purpose, the Maryland Democratic Party exists to elect Democrats. We are geared up every two years in order to run something called a coordinated campaign that we expect all of our DCCs to get involved with, where we're out knocking doors, making phone calls, making sure we're electing Democrats up and down the ballot. We had a very successful 2020 coordinated campaign where we partnered with states like Georgia to help elect a Democratic Senator there, where we paired up with states like Pennsylvania, where we got to get very, very close. And because of our calls, very possibly, we made a difference in the presidential election. Right now, the Maryland Democratic Party, and therefore our central committees, are once again getting ready to make sure that we get a Democratic governor elected. That's our big task as a party right now. We need to make sure that we take back that governor's mansion. We need to make sure that us here in Maryland, we send a Democrat back to the US Senate because we have that race on the ballot too. Not only that though, we know in places like Howard, we need to make sure we make, uh, maintain a Democratic hold on your county executive position. Yeah. Those are the type of elections that affect your day-to-day -day lives. And those are the type of uh, elections where we need our Democratic uh, Central Committees to step up, get involved, and support the general coordinated campaign effort. When we get into coordinated campaign season, specifically, each of our Central Committees, they generally run their own office. Being involved in a local Democratic Central Committee is like being involved in a nonprofit. You have a treasurer, you have budgets to file, you have people to report to, you have duties that have to get done. There's a lot of service involved because these are voluntary positions. Um, so there are a lot of things that the Democratic Party does, but specifically every two years, we are built to win elections. That is our primary purpose and function. Excellent, excellent. Anyone else care to comment on that? Yeah, I'd like to add a little something. To, uh, Sue mentioned the, uh, their, her experience before the primary. Uh, now, we, when I was there, this was in 2006 when I was the chair, and that was a big election. That was the year Martin O'Malley uh, ran. But it's also the year that Paul Sarbanes retired. 
And so there was a whole list of candidates that were going to run for his seat, Ben Cardin being one of them. So that vacated his seat, which brought a whole other list of candidates. Our, our pre-primary activity was crazy. We were busy, busy, busy. And what we decided to do was because you have to remain, <clears throat> uh, you know, uh, uh, neutral in the primary. So what we did was in order to do that, you could withhold everything from everybody or you could give the same services to everybody. And yeah. that's what we decided to do. We thought we want every Dem Democrat to look good. We um, now that was the first election, I think, that they had van the Voters Access Network. So that phone bank, that was revolutionary that we set up. Now we had a headquarter year round at that time. I don't, did you have that, Sue? Did you yeah. all have the headquarters? Yeah. We don't now, the, the coordinated campaign will have the headquarters. It's something that was very beneficial. Maybe someday we, we could do that again. But we had, uh, we had the literature for every single candidate and we would even call them when, the, when their pile of literature shrunk. So even though we were being neutral, you could see <clears throat> who is it that's getting the most attention. That was up to them. That was how their campaign was going. But we assisted them in so many ways. And it was such a huge group of people. Um, it was a lot of fun, actually. Uh, one of the things that kept us so busy was uh, on the, the night before the primary, the Central Committee, we loaded up our cars with all the signs that were had been separated according to precinct. So you had the correct appropriate signs for each precinct. And we went out because we thought we don't want to any Democratic candidates to stay up all night trying to get to every precinct when we could do it in a fraction of time and they could be fresh in the morning and, and do a good job campaigning that last day. It's always worked like that. Um, we, had, we were cranking out walk lists from Van and that was all new. And the lit dropping, uh, you know, once once the primary was over, then we went full force into the general. Then you're doing, you're knocking on doors with the candidates. Uh, we're handing out literature, uh, doing lit drops even on our own. Um, and that's in addition to uh, the the Howard County Fair, which comes right in the middle of that. We have the booth there. That's that's a bear, you know, just to set up and then to organize the staffing of it for a whole week. But we right. get so much attention yeah. and we succeeded in getting coordinating a schedule of having uh, the local electeds on a schedule that was posted on the booth when they would be there, uh, that people could come and hear them speak and shake hands and get to know them. So it's very, very busy. I think that to me is what the, the individual's job is. It, it's like to me, it's like the stage hands. They're the ones that put yeah. the whole infrastructure together. They're the ones that know where every, everything is and, and do the, the hard work. And hopefully also create the blue wave. Yeah. That's the challenge. Does someone else have a comment? Because I, I wanted to focus on something you just said, Tony. You said they're like the stage hands. So mm -hmm. addressing each of you, does that mean that the Central Committee is not actually making policy and giving direction to candidates? Oh, no. Justin, you want to tackle that first? <laughs> so somebody actually said earlier on the meeting that it was um, not only that they were stagehands, uh, but they were the boots on the ground. And they really are. Um, how we see at the Maryland Democratic Party are elected officials that serve in these Democratic Central Committee positions. You are the boots on the ground, making sure that we have a good democratic turnout for the voters that elected you. Because you are elected representatives when you serve on a democratic central committee. Yeah. And when people elect you to that position, they hope and they expect you to work as hard as you can to make sure our democratic party is as strong as it can be in Howard County. Mm -hmm. One of the things it says in our bylaws is that you have to work in the interests of the democratic party at all times. That is one of the duties that you were assigned with being on a Democratic Central Committee. Our Democratic Central Committee is the best of them. They have precinct organizations that the Central Committee itself runs. They have individuals that they've reached out to and they found in every precinct or close to every precinct in their county. That's all run by the Central Committee. They keep their own volunteer list. That way, when it's time for us to come together as a party to run a coordinated campaign, we're not starting from scratch because that Democratic Central Committee has been doing that on the ground work of door knocking and phone banking. 
to make sure when we need to mobilize, we have volunteers that are active and engaged. And that's one of the things that Democratic Central Committee members get elected to do. The other thing to know about how the party structure works, the Maryland Democratic Party, we're not a big team. Right now we have a team of 11. Six months ago, we had a team of eight. We have a very small paid team at the Maryland Democratic Party level. We rely heavily on the work that gets done at the party level to be done on a central committee basis because the central committee is what actually runs democratic uh, politics in your area. Like you heard, yard signs going out to polls, they don't just magically show up. Somebody's got to go out there and put those signs up. And I guarantee you that if you don't have signs at your polls on election day, central committee members on the Democratic Central Committee will hear about it from their voters and they won't be happy. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, no, they truly are the boots on the ground and a lot of it's based around elections and getting Democrats elected. That is what we do as the Democratic Party. Exactly. Okay, all right. So anyone else wanna talk about that very quickly? You're dealing with um, your role, whether or not you're a policy making body and how you interact with candidates? Well, I'll, I'll address um, when we were on the Central Committee, um, if there was any legislation either at the county level or the state level that we wanted to um, address, let our, let our elected officials know our um, feeling on, we only really took that on if like all of our Democrats on the, the county council agreed. So if we had an issue where, you know, two of our members were for it, two were against it, we didn't really express a central committee opinion because, it, you know, it, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a unified um, opinion. So I will say um, one of the issues that I remember, because um, it's close to my heart, and you probably already know this, is sent, uh, the uh, Citizens Election Fund. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> all, all four members were for it. So I believe Abby Hendricks, who was our president, testified for it um, as, as, as the Central Committee president. Mm -hmm. um, and then several of us spoke as well as an individual. But if another, um, I can't think of another issue that was divided. So we could all speak of that as individuals, but we couldn't say we were representing the Howard County Democratic Central Committee with that testimony. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Um, Ms. Pat, Tony, did you wanna weigh in? Well, I want to weigh in on the, the, the question of how, how much can you direct the, the candidates? Uh, how much can you control or direct them? They're individuals in their, in their strong individuals. So they wouldn't, they wouldn't be putting themselves out there, I think. And they all have a different take on it. And they all have to realize that what their district is like. We had one, and I won't mention any names, we had one candidate who I thought was an excellent candidate, but did not want to be too closely associated with the, the Democratic Central Committee because it was a fairly divided district. Um, I respected that, and, um, and we gave the services that that one needed that that candidate wanted. But I think that the, the idea of, you know, I, I use the analogy of the stagehands and, a, you know, a stagehand's not going to be too, too aggressive with an actor. And I would say it's about the same with the central committee member and the candidate. They're going to yeah. decide what their, you know, how their approach is, how close they want to be to the establishment, how they want to do their fundraising. All of that stuff is pretty individual. I think that there are people in the Central Committee just by nature that raise to the level that candidates want to talk to them and want to get their advice. That's fine, but it's also uh, it's always better if it's initiated by the candidate, I, I think. Or they'll just keep their distance. You, you can't rule them too closely. It's their campaign. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Excellent. Ms. Pat, do you have a comment? Yeah, I just want to say that um, <clears throat> I felt that it was very important that we establish rapport, you know, with our candidates, and that's about it. And to let yeah. them know we were here to support them and and all the needs they had around um, their campaign literature, their campaign yard signs, and all of that great information. And they made sure that we had a contact person that we could just call 
you know, at the snap of a finger to get that kind of information out to the residents because the residents want it. I mean, they would bombard us. Where are the signs? Where is the information? You know, why don't right. we see this? When is it coming? So we make <laughs> sure, oh yeah, the candidates knew your information is wanted. Please get it to us. Okay, so I'm going to turn the tide just a little bit because I'm hearing unity. I'm hearing working together. I'm hearing working with the state party. I'm hearing working with candidates and electeds. I'm hearing a lot of togetherness, but let's talk real world. Mm -hmm. um, out in the political stratosphere, you hear words like accountability, um, words like um, establishment, words like um, nonpartisan, all issues where we've had conversations around here. So um, without focusing in on one, let's talk about how we deal with um, disagreement. We're never going to agree on everything, right? So um, Justin, I'm going to toss that over to you. <laughs> let you get started. No, let's definitely. talk about it. And I, I really want to talk about, in particular, the word accountability. How, how does the Central Party, uh, Central Committee play into that word? Yeah. So as far as accountability is concerned, there have been situations where an elected official does something so egregious that a central committee comes together in generally a unanimous fashion, because that's how these things generally should be made, politically speaking. The central committee should be able to agree on something like this if the committee is going to take action to do this. But if a legislator does something so egregious that the entire central committee and the Democratic base in that county rises up and says, that was unacceptable, in that case, a Democratic central committee can hold their public elected officials accountable. But because the overall duty of the party is to make sure that you're always making, uh, always providing that the Democratic Party values are coming through through the actions of the Central Committee, it can't be based upon personal feelings. It can't be based upon uh, like split judgments in the Central Committee. These are the type of things that have to be united fronts. Um, generally, when it comes to other things that a Central Committee does, uh, accountability, goes both ways. So one of the duties of the Central Committee is to make sure that we elect Democrats up and down the ballot. One of the things that you can actually be removed from a Central Committee for doing is uh, uh, supporting publicly a candidate that is not a Democrat, that is an independent, that is a Republican, that is a write-in candidate of somebody who is running against a Democrat that has already been elected in a primary election. One of the core values of the Democratic Party is we let our voters decide who they want to represent them. That's not the Central Committee's job. That's the job of the voters in your county. Just like they selected the Democratic Central Committee, we have faith in our voters to select the best nominee. And it is the role of the Central Committee to come together to make sure that person, who is the voter's choice, gets elected on election day. In your personal capacity, Obviously, we have a lot of passionate activists on Democratic Central Committees around the state who are issue advocates for various issues across the Democratic gambit, and that's a good thing. We want our activists to be passionate, and we want our activists to be involved in the policy conversations. But that's as an individual. As a central committee, we always got to keep our eye on the prize of what a central committee does. So in its official capacity, for instance, during a primary election, Democratic Central Committees don't make endorsements. In fact, you're prohibited from doing so because we want to make sure that we're not putting our thumb on the scales in who's getting elected. So generally, that's why central committees have to stay neutral. But that does not stop an individual who serves on a central committee from supporting the candidate they want in a primary because we will never put that type of restriction on our best activists in the states, our most committed activists who are the ones who join our central committees. So I, I think I answered that question. But if you have more questions on that topic, let me know. Oh, we'll circle back around. <laughs> so to the, uh, the rest of you on the call, let's talk about what accountability looks like um, both ways. I, I, I like that approach, accountability in reference to the Democratic Central Committee. And to be more specific, since we're a little slower, dealing with accountability with candidates and electeds and dealing with accountability as an individual of the Central Committee. So um, who would like to start first? Can we start with Ms. Pat? Well, you know, um, <clears throat> when you join the Central Committee, you know that you're working to support the Democratic candidates. You know that. So that is what you do, and that is your focus. 
Um, but then, as Justin has said, um, in your personal life, that's something different. But we all come together to do the job, which is to support. And that is what we do. We remain neutral, but we support. Anything else other than giving out yard signs, you know, making phone calls, canvassing, door knocking, all of that great stuff to help the candidates, that is what we do. But we don't step outside of that realm. Did not. Okay. All right. Well, Sue? I, I do remember one occasion um, where um, an elected official was shown to be not, not a good elected official. And this, um, this, this, when we were on the central committee, we did write a letter um, denouncing um, that elected official and he did resign shortly after that. Not, I'm not saying because we wrote the letter, but I mean, that was something that the whole entire central committee was, was 100% behind saying that what he was doing was wrong and that we were going to, you know, let people know that we thought that he was doing is was wrong. Exactly. I remember that too. And, but we also got, you know, permission from uh, the party. The party knew about it, the National Party, the leadership in the National Party knew about it, the Human Rights Commission. There were so many factors that entered into that. And since this person was a Democrat for whom we had worked, uh, we had to have a statement. And so we all came together and got that done. Absolutely. Absolutely. Tony, did you have something to add? You're muted. Can't hear you. Yeah, not not that much. We had we had that occur. We had a, a elected resign, and and so we had to go through the process of of the replacement and be very you know careful and following every rule. So that because there are a number of people came up wanted to. Uh, nominate themselves for the position. Then we interviewed them. We had a fair, uh, you know, contest, and, and we went about our business. But that was my only real uh, occurrence with it. Directly okay. involved in. Now that's something you touched on, though, that a lot of people may not know. Um, and Justin, I think I'll pivot to you in nominating people for vacancies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Justin, another one yeah. of the. Under Maryland state law, that's another role of our Democratic Central Committees, mm -hmm. is to forward nominations to the governor for approval when we have vacancies. Mm -hmm. So state delegate, for instance, if we have a state delegate vacancy, the Central Committee or Central Committees, if that uh, legislative district crosses counties, mm -hmm. will interview individuals and submit names um, to actually appoint somebody to that seat. It's a very powerful responsibility. And again, that's why we had these positions elected to make sure that these people also have accountability and that they're not just, you know, playing politics or doing whatever they're doing and actually appointing the best people to these spots. Excellent, excellent, good to know. So um, when we talk, uh, I'm gonna touch on another hot button. The word establishment has become a pejorative to some people. <laughs> so, but I wanna understand, um, how do we do with the different, I would call it factions within the Democratic Party? Is there a place for everyone? And how exactly do we work together? Because there's a lot of, it's the big tent, right? There's a lot of variability when you call yourself a Democrat, what that actually means. Um, so, Justin? I said, when, it, when it comes to individuals who may have conflicting points of view, Obviously, this is a public service position. You don't get to pick who you serve with on a Democratic Central Committee. No. You might not have you might have people in there that you personally you don't like very much, and that's perfectly fine. But the goal is to make sure that everybody knows that they're on the same team, that everybody's working towards the same end, and you always keep your eyes on that prize, which is making sure you get more Democrats elected in Howard County. That's the goal: is to work together to find that common ground where you can work together to further the aims and principles of the Democratic Party overall. Now, if somebody doesn't want to support the Democratic Party or our Democratic candidates, not sure whether they should be on a DCC or not at that point in time. It may not quite be the job for you. Very good. Sue, did you have thoughts on that? Um, well, I mean, we had 20 people um, on our central committee, so you can imagine 
you know, on an issue, there's 20 different um, <laughs> ideas. And I think by sharing them, we didn't always agree, but yeah. it was it was good to hear what yeah. other people on the committee thought. And some of the things we talked about never went out of the room. I mean, we, we just, we would discuss things and, you know, we said, you know, we, we're, we can't come to an agreement on this, so we're not going to talk about it. Um, you know, we, and I'm thinking more after the election and, and we're, we're between, um, you know, the, the, the presidential and the governor's uh, election. And, you know, there were issues that different legislators would bring to us and say that this is something that we're interested in. And then if the, the committee and the legislative group all agreed, I mean, we, I think we would make statements. Um, but I mean, you can't have everybody agree on every single issue because there are a lot of issues out there mm -hmm. and you just have to be cognizant that you're not always right. Um, exactly. You know, you can have an opinion that may not be yeah. the, the best. <laughs> So, you know, you have you have to realize that other people's opinions, maybe they're right once in a while too. You you could repeat that if you'd like. I, I, I wouldn't mind hearing that again. <laughs> okay. Um, Tony or Ms. Pat, did you want to weigh in? You know, that that is really interesting because it, you know, it takes a group of people to come together for consensus around those issues that we have to work with. And you know, sometimes you have people who don't really have that skill set. So you want to make sure that whatever the issue is, that it's out there on the table and they, they feel safe enough to discuss it and that we can all come to some kind of agreement or not. Just table maybe for another, another discussion once we all have more information. But you try to make it a safe space so that all of us can put our opinions out there. Right. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. And, and again, these are political activists, so they wouldn't be there in the first exactly. place. They're, they're right. strongly opinion uh, mm -hmm. and, and they have in their mind, they have their goals. However, and we did have some really robust discussions around the table. We had a smaller group than you. This was, mm -hmm. there were 13 of us, but um, uh, we would have some robust discussions and we would not always agree, but and we would sometimes table it and come back later, but always in the end, it would come to a vote. We stuck religiously to Robert's Rules of Order. And you know, if, if you do that, then in the end, even though somebody didn't get exactly what they wanted, there was always a pretty good understanding that we were in it together. Most of the time we didn't depart uh, with the same disagreement we had started the discussion with. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you're talking operationally, there's going to be some disagreement, 20 people, right? Mm -hmm. um, Robert's Rules of Order, obviously the guideline, but is there an expectation of privacy in your discussions? Uh, you hear the word transparency. Uh, are you allowed to discuss things behind closed doors? And is it appropriate to share every piece of information you get? Like, where, where are the boundaries there, or are there? So... Um there are two different types of meetings that a central committee can have. Central committee meetings are open to the public. Any votes that a central committee takes have to be open by the public in an open ballot. You know closed ballots, we're all about transparency. If we're taking a vote in public and a member of the public wants to be there for that vote, they have to be allowed. There's no, get, there, there's no way to get around that as far as party structure goes. However, the central committee also has the opportunity to meet an executive session to actually discuss the business of the committee, things they may wanna have frank conversations about that may not reflect an individual's perspective, uh, that may, they may not want to get out to the public. And generally, those conversations, those frank, hard conversations that have to happen, we generally do expect individuals to keep that in-house, to keep that within the central committee itself. And that's just more professional uh, courtesy because you are all serving together. And in order for a central committee to get the best work done possible, you have to have a space where you can have those open and frank conversations. It's it's just necessary. Right, right. I that makes sense. I've been in a situation where professional courtesy wasn't involved. It makes it difficult. But I'm not part of this conversation, so I'm going to stop talking. Um, Tony, what do you what do you have to say about professional courtesy? Because this is the day and age of social media. Like everything is out there for everyone to see. How do you how do you balance professional courtesy and and what's out there on 
Al Gore's internet. <laughs> it's it's difficult. It's very difficult. Um, I don't know. That's a tough question. I just personally, I just try to you know remain nice and fair, and I'll argue with people though, and um, and uh, and if there's an argument that comes back that's that's valued valuable as far as it's a valid argument they they have sources to back it up it's not vindictive it's not childish name calling but that is a social media you bring up that point and that does make it difficult um i do think that with the central committee though the social media is is a, a handy tool yeah. and i think in fact i think the updating the website all the online stuff email it's an ongoing project that never ends there and always needs people attending to it. Now, when I was there, it was kind of the beginning. We had, when I started, we were still mailing postcards and transitioning to the email. I think we had 400 email addresses, but by the end of the couple of years with an election in between, we had 5,000. Uh, so it was really growing immensely at that time. That was the... Yeah, that was the uh, the launching of it, I think. Yeah. And uh, uh, we had we had an incredible team too at that time. I mean, we had you know Carol Fisher was, was on uh, Ray Rankin, Meredith Bowman, um, and uh, shoot, I'm forgetting names, but but it was a powerful team. I mean, they're they're still famous. So right. the uh, you know we had we we were able to manage things. Uh, in a very amicable way most most of the time. Uh, and it was before the social media um, insensitivity had really taken hold. So I don't know, I guess that there was more respect maybe in the conversations as <laughs> we didn't carry it on later on online. But yeah, I, See, I would compliment you because you all in growing the party, you said you started with 400 email addresses, you went to 5,000. Um, that those, those are fruits of labor. That, that's work. And those are results yeah. of working and working together. So um, I would talk to Miss Pat um, or Sue in, in talking about that. How does professional courtesy and integrity in dealing with your fellow Central Committee members um, impact the fruits of your labor? Was that too much of a question? <laughs> well, well I, I think to to um to work together mm -hmm. you have to be able to be kind to people i mean yeah. it's a you know do unto others i mean i did that you know it you just have to be able to have a civil conversation yeah and i mean i'll get on my soapbox a little you can disagree mm -hmm. with someone without being disagreeable yeah. and it is very hard to give intent to someone else. So like they may be saying something and in your mind you're saying, I know why they're saying that, but you don't. So I, I think you have to give people the benefit of the doubt. Um, I mean, we see it on social media all the time. Somebody makes a benign comment and then all of a sudden somebody says, you know, you did this because of this reason. And you know that was totally not the reason. So I think we we have to be civil. Um, I think we tried. Um, you know there there were times that we got upset with each other. Yeah. Um, but we tried to work it out. We did. But I I don't think you should be airing that kind of thing on social media, or or anywhere else. I mean it's it's not good for it doesn't look it's not a good look. And it doesn't look good for you. It doesn't look good for the party. It doesn't look good for the Democrats. So that that's my kind of soapbox on that. Yeah. No. Same to exactly. Back. You know, I can agree with what you had said because of the fact that we know that we're we were the face of the of the Democratic Party in Howard County, and we wanted that to be a very positive face. So whatever our goals were, we were determined we're going to meet those goals, and we want we're going to do that in a very professional manner. And, and that's how we did things. Excellent, excellent. So you said the face, but were you um, also involved in things like campaign finance, discussions of where candidates get their money, where, you know, all of these things. Justin, how, how much of that is a part of what the Central Committee does? <laughs> so 
actually that's that's actually a great question so there are actually some rules involved around central committee financing each of our democratic central committees is an official campaign entity with the maryland state board of elections so unlike a democratic club or something like that our dccs are actually allowed to spend a good deal of money on political expenditures around an election that's another part of their role in getting democrats elected this is where the money on the ground actually gets pushed out. That's how you pay for something like an office, for instance. And it's generally because you're allowed to have specific financing um, coming from your central committee going towards electoral, electoral politics. Not many other groups have the ability to have that type of spending. As far as candidates go and things like that, there are also rules against coordination because just like the Democratic Central Committee is its own campaign finance entity, so are our individual candidate campaign committees. They're also individual entities. Uh, that's something that the treasurer of the DCC would be well-versed on, on what you can and cannot do those financial lines. And we do have resources available at the state party to help out our treasurers in that task. You're not in this alone. You're trying to figure out what the law is. Maybe if you've never read it before, we can help. Um, but as far as like campaign um, fundraising and stuff like that, Candidates, campaigns, how they do fundraising, that's up to them. They're their own campaign committees. Obviously, uh, we would hope that if you have a favorite candidate, that you would give them a donation if you're able, of course, because that is something that leaders do in their communities. If you believe somebody's going to help make a difference, we hope if you have the ability, you'll put a little something in the game to make sure that person gets elected so that you have the best representative for whatever the position is. Um, as far as the campaign, the, the uh, DCC campaign committee itself, though, generally, you are responsible for your own fundraising. Uh, when the central committee does fundraising, normally that money stays with the central committee. So candidates, you can help out with their efforts, but the DCC is responsible for your fundraising and your fundraising alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um would anyone else like to comment on that question? Well, I, I would like to say that it was up to us to be as creative as we could to raise our money <laughs> because we knew what our expenses were going to be. You know, we had to maintain our rent. We wanted to make sure we had everything in our office that would uh, be there to sustain us when the residents would come in, uh, they would want information or they would want something a representative of the Democratic Party. So we always tried to make sure we had those kinds of mementos, I guess that's a good word you could use, in the office for them. So we stuck to our budget, we did. And we planned uh, our fundraising for that budget to make sure that we were doing things for the residents of Howard County, our Democrats. Excellent. And I, so I what I'm hearing, like to, go ahead. I just wanted to follow up on what Justin said about um, having, you know, a little bit of skin in the game um, as far as making contributions to our candidates. Um, we were invited to every fundraiser, um, and we would we would the majority of, we would try to go to the majority of them if we could fit it into our schedules, and you know we we would give what we could. Um, you know we we might go to multiple fundraisers for the same candidate. So obviously we couldn't always give, you know, a, a high dollar amount, but we usually would give something just so that we could show our support um, and, you know, be, be with the candidates, that, to, you know, to, to support them and to help them get elected. Excellent. Excellent. So what I'm hearing is each to his own entity. Um, what I'm also hearing is as far as oversight goes by the central committee, it looks like if there's something egregious and the 20 of you can agree, then it will be addressed. But beyond that, it's kind of outside of the purview of the central committee. Is that accurate? Uh, I would say, yeah. Okay, all right, very good. So let's talk a little bit about um, the public because we've talked about a whole lot. Um, in dealing with the public, Tony, you grew your list from 400 to 5,000. How does that happen? You're muted. <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm not used to going to too many Zoom meetings lately. The, um, I do think that was partly because it, it was the, uh, 
the beginning of, of using email uh, that much. We were, we were transitioning from mail. Um, but well, what we found was the, we had something like 1,200 addresses, but we were getting, um, we, we were getting um, 800 back as non-deliverable. <laughs> we, we saw that we were getting so, such a volume of undeliverable deliverable that we started looking at. And I think too, that it was a email again was sort of new and people were changing addresses more often, whatever. So it was a big mess. Um, there was a group of people that, well, just to answer who did it, <clears throat> was that there were a group of people on the Central Committee that just dedicated their time to, to collecting email addresses. Every time we met anybody or called anybody, mm -hmm. there were people who had collections of email addresses that they were willing to go through. And, and um, so we just, we built it up. We, because of that election, that there were so many candidates um, uh, we had a lot more, <clears throat> I think we had, we came into more contact with the public. We were able to collect more data and it was organized yeah. in a way. We started collecting it on the web page. We started collecting it on the forums that we were, uh, volunteer forums and everything. So I think it was just, a, but it was, a, it was an effort by a couple of people that, that was uh, amazing. Uh, it was so successful. That's, that's a great story. And, and what I'm hearing is as communications evolve, as data collection evolves, am I correct? Um, and I guess if we still have Justin, the role of the Central Committee is to actually, in getting out the vote, you're collecting information, you're gathering information. Like, how are we dealing with touches? Um, and I'm talking about going forward. Like, how, what does yeah. that look like? What are some best practices maybe across the state to kind of grow the base? Because that's what I'm, that's the bottom line of what mm -hmm. I'm hearing. Right. I, no, you're absolutely right. So uh, when it comes to politics, seven eighths of the work is done in between elections. Mm -hmm. During election season itself, we only have four or five months to actually get out there and try to talk to all the voters we need to talk to, to make sure everybody that we need to come out to vote actually comes out to vote. That's what we do during a coordinated campaign. We phone bank, we canvas, we talk to as many of our voters as possible to make sure they're coming out to vote because that's the only way you win in an election. In the off years, though, the Democratic Central Committees are generally the ones responsible for that type of community engagement, for to making sure that you have activated volunteers. And you can do that by doing things like making sure that you're at the Howard County Fair. You need volunteers always to uh, actual man that table at that fair or the person that table at that fair. In order to do that, you need to make sure you have a volunteer list of people willing and able to step up and to help the Democratic Party in your community lists that we're using when it comes to the coordinated campaign at the Maryland Democratic Party level, they don't just pop up overnight. In a lot of places, those lists are carefully cultivated for months and months and months and years before election day. That way, when we get to election day, we don't have to you start the process from scratch because we're already prepared and we're already ready to go. That's one of the goals. So mm -hmm. it's about that continuous community outreach, that continuous community activation, mm -hmm. making sure you are always building the Democratic Party and not letting it stay stagnant. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think. Yeah. So, go ahead. You know, I was just thinking to add to that, you know, we were always at every fair, every festival in the county, every whatever, and we always had something for somebody to sign. You had your name, your address, your email, your phone number. Uh, Democrats, please sign in. We would like to send you newsletters. We'd like to send you this. And that is how we started cultivating to add to those lists. And, and, and I know uh, it should be more than, what, 20 or 30,000, probably more than that by now. But that is how we would get those good Democrats. And then to continue to cultivate them during the year, you send out information to them, you send newsletters out to them, you send whatever we would have um, a very interesting uh, uh, discussion or something that's going on television, we'd invite everybody down to the office, you know, to have uh, soda and, and, and cookies or whatever and watch a debate or anything to keep them engaged, we would do it. You always had to have a hook because you have to motivate your base, you have to keep them engaged and you have to let them know that you're here. You're here for that reason. So you have to do those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Excellent. 
Yeah, I, I think that the, we, we felt it was very helpful. And Justin's right. It's the, the, the work between the elections is, is gathering an awful lot of materials. But we did find, think it was very helpful with the GOTV drive that we were able to contact people immediately. We didn't have to do a mailing that would be there five or six days later. We were is able to contact people immediately and sometimes get reactions from them as well. Excellent. It's a great tool. See, yeah, I think anything? when we have um, an election, you've got, you know, a collection of people that are interested in one particular candidate and they may only be, the majority of them may only be interested in that candidate, but there's always two or three that come in with that candidate and then they say, well, now what else can I do? Yeah. So, you know, you have to bring them in. And um, I remember someone came in off the street one time and we were in the office. They were just walking by and came in and they were a new resident to Howard County. And I think it was before the 2016 presidential election. And she's like, oh, are you, are you, can we get involved in the Hillary campaign? Oh, yeah. And it's like, yeah, you're at the right no. place. And, and you know, it was, she came in with her husband and, baby and she's like I'll be here tomorrow and it was really exciting that you know you get new people with each campaign and then you try and bring them along to 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 work during the the off not campaigning time right. mm -hmm. exactly. a great story so and that actually brings me to my last question I know we're coming to the bottom of the hour but I would like each of you to talk about the evolution like where are we going as a party, as a central committee, and, and how does that involve new people, new residents? We're in a burgeoning area. Howard County is growing leaps and bounds. However people feel about it, it it's happening. So how, how do we do, how, how do we set goals to evolve and grow in the current climate? Um, so. I'll say to start off, this actually lets me talk about one of the other big responsibilities of our central committees. One of the first tasks that your new central committee in Howard County is gonna to have to face is putting together a two year plan. That is something that every central committee in the state has to do. And it's one of your first tasks. It's actually getting your work plan together for how you're gonna build the party in Howard County between now and the presidential election in 2024. This takes work and it takes thought and it takes time to come up with these type of plans. So as a central committee member, if you're running for the committee, if you're on the committee, start thinking about it now, how you want to help build the Democratic Party in Howard County. Because remember, as Democratic Central Committee members, you were the leaders of the community. You were the people that were actually elected to get this work done. So as the Maryland Democratic Party, we're going to hold you to that. We expect that two-year plan, and we expect it to be fire. We want to see a fantastic plan, and uh, we're going to help you carry it out. And that's one of the great things about our central committees and where we're going. Our central committees, each one is different. Each one has its own uh, flavor. Each one has its own strategies, has its own dynamics, inner workings, how they interact with their public officials, how they interact with each other, what their favorite activities are, how they raise money. We allow a lot of that stuff to be done and those decisions to be made at a central committee level. These are truly vitally important positions. And I can tell you one thing. Without strong Democratic Central Committees in each of our counties in the state of Maryland, the Maryland Democratic Party isn't going anywhere. We can't do the work that we need to get done without strong Central Committees that have a vision for what they want to do to grow their Democratic populace in their counties. So to everyone who's watching, who's running, everyone who wants to get involved, everyone who's like, what does a Central Committee member do? Start meeting your Central Committee members. Start looking at that ballot. See what the individuals who are running for these spots represent and what their vision is moving forward. Because these are the people that we at the state party level rely on to actually make sure we have a strong democratic party into the future. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. Ms. Pat? I would like to say in order for the democratic party to continue to thrive and grow is that those who are running for a seat on the central committee, you've got to make a true commitment that it's for the party and it's not for you. You got to say that as a member of this committee, I'm going to give up my time to help to plan with those who are working with me to do the best that I can to make sure that good Democrats get elected. And that takes time, 
thought, effort, and money. And all of those things you can do, but you got to do it together. You got to put your goals and objectives to the side and say to yourself, I'm elected now as a member of the Central Committee. I am the face of the Democratic Party in Howard County, and this is what the goal is. All of us working together to elect the best Democrat that we can. Fantastic. All right. Uh, Tony? Uh, I totally agree with Pat there. Uh, and, and I think it's anybody that's, that wants to be involved in this and is running for a position or is, is, uh, is interested needs to commit to, to the two, two year plan. That's essential. We need blue waves every year. At yeah. this point in our local parks in Maryland and totally in Howard County, yeah. it's the choice is the blue wave or the red riptide to ruin. And yeah. we don't want that now, do we? So yeah. they, need to, they need to commit to that, to get Democrats elected, put the blinders on about who you supported before, get the Democrats elected. Exactly. Um, now for the future in those plans, and uh, Justin did hit on, we did try uh, to put together a precinct organization. From time to time, we have tried it. Never quite successfully. I'm wondering if there's not an abridgment where we could do We'll, we'll think about that, but I, I yeah. think that that will help in as far as the expanding county, the number of people involved, the precinct organization would be very helpful. Also, I do think that a, a year round headquarters would be very helpful. Maybe that's just a dream, but I think it's one we should we yeah. should try to accomplish if we can. Very good. And Sue, talk to us about the future. Yeah, I, I have to say, I agree with uh, everything Pat and Tony just said. Um, one of the most important things is it's been a little contentious in Howard County with the primary and whoever wins that primary, the, the whole entire central committee has to be behind, be behind the nominee. Yeah. Um, you know, what went before went before and, you know, you can be disappointed, but you got to put that aside and you got to work to elect the person who was nominated. Mm -hmm. um, we also tried to get a precinct program working and it, I don't I don't know what it is but that is really hard to, to accomplish so um, you know good luck to the new central committee but I also feel for them because nobody answers the phone anymore um, the text that in 2020 seemed like such a wonderful thing they all go to spam now Thank um, you. you know they, <laughs> So it's social media, unfortunately, and knocking on doors. So, you know, get your tennis shoes ready and get out there and knock on doors. There you go. There you get out there and knock on doors. <laughs> Guys, I just want to say thank you very much. Again, the goal of this conversation was not to promote any slates or individuals or any of that. It was what is the Democratic Central Committee and why is it important to you? And I hope that we've answered that for some people. Um, before we sign off, I just want to give one last introduction. I'm Cynthia Fikes, president of Columbia Democratic Club. Um, our next meeting will be an ice cream social probably the second or third week in August. So look out for our social media and we'll get you the information. Um, Sue, if you want to give us your, your sign off. Yes, um, Ellicott City, Western Howard, uh, will be recruiting volunteers for the Howard County Fair. Um, <laughs> we don't meet in... Um, July and we won't meet in August. So our next meeting will probably be the 21st of September, but looking forward to the Columbia Democratic Club ice cream social. Uh, all <laughs> Ellicott City can join that as well. Um, I'm sure we're welcome. Yes. <laughs> yes. So thank all you, right. Cynthia, for um, organizing this. I, I think it's been a, a useful and, and I think people yeah. can learn can learn a lot from listening to what our experiences have been, hopefully anyway. I hope so, I hope so. Tony, uh, you sign off for us, go ahead. All right, well, just saying thank you very much for, for putting this together. It's been really, really interesting. I've had to call back some memories from quite a few yeah. years ago, but uh, it's interesting to see the the evolution and in, in, mm -hmm. uh, like Justin, I like, I like the idea of the two year plan. I think that's really a very good idea. I like it's it. Very important. But very thank important. you all very much. Thank you, Tony McCuffin. And 
Pat, Patricia Thomas. Yes, I'd just like to say thank you also, Cynthia. This has been a great conversation. And just remembering all the things that we've done as former uh, Democratic uh, you know, Central Committee members is really something. And we've done a lot. We've done a lot of really, really hard work. And we really hope that this will let people understand why it's important to elect the best that you can to this position. Uh, as President Thurgood Marshall, Democratic Club, we are on vacation. Not really. <laughs> we meet from September to June. And, and as, I, as my members know, you hear from me <laughs> from September to January. <laughs> but uh, we're, our website is there. Please come and check us out anytime. Thank you. Thank you. And Justin Butler. Everybody, thank you so much for being on. Everyone who is watching online tonight, thank you so much for taking the time to learn how your party works. Not enough people do it, and it's really important. So thank you for taking the time to cover what could be boring subject matter to some. We really do appreciate your time. To Pat, Sue, and Tony, thank you for your prior service. We appreciate it. People like you are why the Howard County DCC is as strong as it is today. Thank you for your service. And Cynthia, you're providing a valuable public service here in educating people about what our central committees do. Thank you for this great idea for this event. Thank you for the invitation. And my final signing off words from the Maryland Democratic Party, primaries are hard. Not all of your favorite candidates are gonna win. There are gonna be hurt feelings. The one thing we ask for you after the primary, one band, one song, as my lovely chair would say. One band, one, one song. Band, one song. <laughs> that's how we do it. We need everybody to come together and that's the only way we're gonna make sure we go all blue in 22. Thanks for your time, everybody. All Thank right. you, very Thanks. grateful. Thank you all so much. Tomorrow's the last day of early voting, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Primary day is July 19th. Let your friends and family know. Um, we've been calling and people are actually not aware that we're voting right now because of all the changes. So um, as always, we are grateful for your time and attention. And um, that's a wrap, guys. Thank you so much for joining us this evening and you have a good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night.